I moved a lot growing up. By the time freshman year of high school came around, I had moved seven or so times and was about a year and a half into my most recent move. I had found a pretty close group of friends in middle school and we all went to high school together. I met him through one of these close friends. They were in band together. And even though he was almost four years older than us, we welcomed him into our group. Sam was easily twice my size, tall and heavy set, and was originally kind of intimidating although I was never afraid. I had a bad kind of home when I was younger and I spent as much time as I could at school, sometimes hanging around the school campus until six or seven at night with my group of friends. Three of us lived in the same direction and we would walk the half hour trip together until our path split. One slightly colder evening, Sam offered to walk home with me since the others had already gone home. I just thought he was being a gentleman He mentioned something from a previous move when he lived in California. He didn't walk a friend home and something horrible happened. He left it at that and I let him walk home with me. We got a lot closer after that. We bonded over both living in California and exchanged numbers. He would message me late at night about his depression and self-harm and I just wanted to help. A few months later he tried asking me out. It was this big romantic gesture. He had learned a Disney song on the ukulele, sang it to me in the cafeteria, but I was already dating someone else. And when I turned him down, he got angry, freaky, quiet, twitchy kind of angry. I felt so bad. I started seeing him everywhere. We were still friends. We still hang out in groups. But I would pass him on the street, walking somewhere, and then a few minutes later, I'd see that he changed directions and it started following me. He would walk me to classes by following me and passing period at a distance. I started to minimize the group time we spent together and he would follow me more. I had friends meet me at each class and walk me to the next one because I felt unsafe. He knew where I lived. Then he started to talk, not to me, but to mutual friends about that one girl in California who he tried to walk home. At first, she just shared my name, some crazy coincidence. Then she had the same brown curly hair and blue eyes, and every time he rambled about her, she became more and more like me, and then said what happened. Over a little weeks, this fantasy evolved. They were walking home, and they were jumped by some guy with a knife. It was a robbery gone wrong on her birthday, January 24th. My birthday. And she died horribly, and he couldn't react in time. She bled out in his arms. Sarah, who has brown curly hair blue eyes my name my birthday sounds like just like me bled out in his arms each retelling added more and more detail and this guy with his sick fantasy about my death would follow me around and knew where i lived my boyfriend was abusive mentally and physically but i stay as close to him as i could whenever i could because if the worst happened i knew for sure he could throw a punch I never felt safe at school or in a little town walking home from school in the dark. One day at school he had a breakdown, freaked out and ran out of the school in a panic. I was sent after him and I found him curled up on the floor. I got closer, I knew about his anxiety and depression and my safety aside I wanted to make sure he was okay. It was then that he told me this horrifying story that I had been hearing from mutual friends without any details. We had been walking home from a concert in California. We passed a dark alley and a homeless man came out with a rusty knife and asked for anything valuable. I fumbled for my phone. I didn't have anything else on me and he thought I was calling the cops. He stabbed me once, twice, and again and again, and Stam stood there horrified. He saw red and grabbed a broken glass bottle near me and attacked the homeless man. He killed him with his own knife. He told me he killed someone. My stalker killed someone. It didn't matter how messed up he was anymore. I didn't care if it was a fantasy or real. I didn't care how it would affect his mental health anymore. I wanted to go to the police. I was scared for my life. My friends convinced me to go to the school counselor first. That morning, we went and told them everything. The stalking, the stories, how he admitted to murder, and that he was the reason they moved to California. How I was afraid for my life and wanted to call the police. The counselor didn't take me seriously though. She went to the principal, and the principal 
who was not a mental health expert, called Sam and talked to him about the accusations. The principal then informed me that he did not think that Sam had any kind of mental illness or that he, I was in any kind of da danger. And that was that. I lost faith in adults, gave up on going to the police. I stayed with my friends, walking me in between classes, hiding behind my abusive boyfriend and looking behind every step of my walk home that year. The counselors ended up gaslighting us to the point where all this all felt like it was a dream now. And I would think it was made up if it weren't for my journal entries recording the events in my growing panic and the similar stories in my friend's group. Let's not meet again, my stalker. I first met my friend Nick in middle school. At the time, we weren't really friends, but I did get to know him a little bit. Frankly, he scared me when I first met him. He was one of those kids who always wore black, gave himself piercings during class using safety pins, etc. He was bipolar and a whole slew of other issues, including being on drugs at the time, too. Fast forward a few years to high school, I didn't really have any friends and was kind of a loner. I also have a fall birthday, so I was one of the first kids in my class to turn 16 and get my license and started driving myself to school. Nick had grown out of his goth, druggy face, got on medication for his psychological problems, and seemed like a fairly normal guy now. One day he was talking to me and asked if I can give him a ride home. I was happy to, since at the time I was pretty desperate for someone to hang out with. I ended up becoming very good friends with him and another guy hang out. The three of us pretty much spent all of our high school as a group together. Looking back, they kind of took advantage of me, and as my family had more money than either of theirs, and I was more than happy to share. I drove them to lunch and paid for it part of the time when they didn't have money. I always had the newest video game systems. I would pay to rent games from Blockbuster. It was never anything major, just a few bucks here and there, and we really did have some good times. They were pretty good guys for the most part, but I do feel like that was the least of the part easy we became my friends. Even if that was the case though, it was worth it for me, because they were literally the only bright spot in an otherwise miserable high school experience. Nick could sometimes be an asshole, particularly if you spent more than a day or so with him at a time. I took a weekend long trip with his beach with him and his family, and he ended up hanging out with his brother more than him because he drove me insane. There was a particular incident at a go-kart track where he literally was screaming at the 10 year old kid trying to pick a fight with the kid's father after the race we had, he had cut him off on the track. He then got pissed at me for not backing him up when I was too busy trying to crawl in the corner and act like I didn't know him because he was being so ridiculous. I was embarrassed and, friend or not, I was kind of hoping the guy would kick his ass because he kind of deserved it. After high school, Nick stayed in our hometown and went to a local community college, while me and the other guy went to a state university a few hours away. We were roommates. We would see Nick when we came home on the weekends and stuff. After that year, he joined us. Nick struggled and was in and out of school, never really trying that hard. At one point, his girlfriend found him cheating, and she took it pretty hard. They started adjusting his medications, and I don't know they think they ever got it quite right because he was never the same again. During this time, I introduced him to my girlfriend's sister. We had actually gone to school with her, my girlfriend a couple years younger, but never really knew her until I started dating her sister. Anyway, they started dating, and at first it was cool. We could double date and stuff. I was a little worried, though, because I knew he could be an asshole sometimes, and I was afraid of what would happen if the relationship went badly. Her parents hated him, and I was always trying to defend him as best as I could without making them hate me, too. I had gotten engaged to my girlfriend, so I felt like I was always in the middle between my future in-laws and one of my best friends. Eventually, they got engaged too, which her parents really hated. They rushed into getting married and moved in together while they were still in school. Things went south rather quickly. He started expecting her to support him, quit going to school, said he was going to live on disability for the rest of his life because of his issues, and they pretty much fought constantly. They had only been married for about four or five months when he started threatening to kill her. He even went as far as details the plans he came up to do with it. Needless to say, she left and they got divorced after less than a year. This put me in the awkward spot of having to choose between my fiancé and her family. 
or one of my own friends. I tried to defend him as best as I could, saying things like, He's not really like that. His medication is still messed up. He doesn't mean that. He won't really do that. But how can you really truly stick up for someone who's threatening to murder his wife? I did the best I could, but ultimately, if I wanted to keep my fiance, I had to lose my friend. Our other friend was supposed to have been my mess my best man, but he refused after what happened with Nick, so I ended up losing both of my friends over the ordeal. Pretty much exactly what I had been afraid of when they first started dating. The last time I spoke to Nick, he had come into the store I was looking at with some people I'd never seen before. I said hey and waved and he immediately fit me off and looked and walked out the door. So this was pretty much confirmation that our friendship was completely over. I'm not really sure how any of this was my fault, but apparently I was supposed to completely leave a six-year relationship and break off an engagement because he was a psychopath who threatened to kill his sister when she left him. I really wish this was the end of the story, but it continues. Her sister found someone new and who was an amazing guy and now one of the closest friends I've ever had. He ended up being my new best man and I have far more in common with him than any of my old friends. He's been like a brother to me. I graduated, got married, moved up, and started a family. My, fa my wife's sister got remarried to the new guy, and they had a three-year-old daughter now. Everyone is happy, and we pretty much forgot about Nick. Until the day he came back to town and started working at the local grocery store. My mother-in-law was the first one to see him and pretty much forbid her daughter from shopping there anymore. She was terrified that he would come to her kid and if they saw them. They, didn't, they ended up moving to the side of town shortly afterwards anyway, so not a big ordeal. I wasn't as threatened by him, so I continued to shop there. I assumed since it had been five years that he moved on with his life too. I would see him work in the register or something and just go a different way and try to avoid his notice. But other than that, I didn't really go out of my way to avoid him. One day I saw him looking at me and sort of nodded. I didn't speak to him because of the last interaction I'd gone. I was met with the coldest stare I've ever seen. After that, any time I was in the store, he would be there following me around. It was almost the way a store would have workers shadow someone they thought might be stealing. Whenever I looked up, he was nearby. When I left the store, he would head outside to bring carts in or something and watch me until I was leaving. The last time I shopped there, I made a mistake of taking my newborn son. He started fussing, so of course I picked him up and tried to calm him down. At that point, Nick walked by and slammed into me, nearly making me drop my baby. He then walked off like nothing had happened. I decided that day that it would probably be best if I just started shopping at Walmart as much as I hated to. That still wasn't the end of it, unfortunately. A few nights later, I had stayed up late on the computer and realized that Brianna slipped the trash out to be picked up. It was about 3 a.m. when I walked outside to move the cans to the curb. As I walked out, the garage, a large van with blacked out windows suddenly came down the street and just stopped at the end of the driveway. I was a little nervous since it was 3 a.m. and they were clearly not a neighbor, so I took my time fiddling with the cans beside the house, waiting to see what they were doing. Eventually, they went slowly down the street and stopped. I put the cans out as fast as I could and went back inside, making sure all the doors were locked. I went to sleep with my gun on a nightstand. Also around this time, my grandmother's house was broken into. Whoever did it knew where everything was in her house because they didn't rummage through anything. They went straight to the jewelry was and took most of it, then went straight to their closet where my grandfather's guns were, took several of them as well. About a week later, they returned and cleaned out everything they had taken the first time. We have no proof, so the cops couldn't do anything, but we're fairly certain it was Nick. He had been to our house before, and I had shown him the guns when we were friends since whoever broke in knew exactly what they were looking for and exactly where to find it. That pretty much limits the list of suspects. I've seen the van driving around in front of since about late night several more times since. It's becoming less frequent since I started shopping elsewhere and thankfully nothing else has happened. I keep my gun nearby at my house now and we have a security system installed. Since nothing has happened, since we can't prove he's been the one who broke into my grandma's, the cops won't do anything. I'm hoping this doesn't escalate again so creepy, crazy old friend who was no longer so friendly. Let's not meet anymore. Got an idea for a video? 
submit it to me on my Instagram in the description below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching.